Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. Bonjour et bienvenue à ce webinaire sur le système de recherche et de l'innovation du Québec et sur les opportunités de collaboration entre le Québec et le Luxembourg. We will continue in English as uh, in the Luxembourg research uh, system, this is uh, the common language uh, to all of us. But please do not hesitate to also write your questions in the chat uh, in French uh, if uh, you prefer. Please allow me to uh, introduce uh, myself first. My name is uh, Stephanie Schott, and I take care of international affairs uh, at the Ministry of Higher Education and Research uh, in Luxembourg. And uh, I will try to guide you uh, through this uh, webinar today. And uh, I have with me uh, my colleague Benjamin Questier uh, from uh, Lux Innovation, who can also briefly introduce uh, himself and who will also be with us uh, throughout this seminar. Good, good afternoon or good morning, everyone. I'm Benjamin Questier. I'm the director of R&D and Innovation Support at Lux Innovation. It's the national innovation agency here in, in the, the Grand Duchy. This webinar actually follows the signing of an agreement in uh, research, uh, innovation and higher education between uh, Luxembourg and Quebec in March this year, which we will hear a little bit more about uh, in a couple of minutes. And uh, in this context, our objective today is uh, for the participants from Luxembourg uh, to get to know the Quebec uh, R&I ecosystem and for all of us to learn about uh, the opportunities for collaboration in research and innovation between our two uh, ecosystems. And for that purpose, we have a number of distinguished speakers here today. First of all, from the Quebec side, to provide information about research and innovation activities and priorities uh, in Quebec. Secondly, uh, from the Luxembourg National Research Fund and from Lux Innovation, to tell us a bit more about the funding and uh, collaboration instruments. And finally, from uh, Luxembourg researchers, who will uh, tell us about their experiences uh, of collaborating uh, with Quebec. So, as I said, uh, please do not hesitate to write your questions uh, in the question section uh, of the chat uh, throughout uh, the webinar. And we will have a Q&A session at the end where we will try to answer most of them. And now, uh, without further ado, um, I will give the word uh, to uh, our first speaker today. Romain Martin, Senior Government Advisor, Premier Conseiller du Gouvernement at the Ministry of Higher Education and Research, uh, to say a few words uh, of uh, welcome and introduction. Romain, the floor is yours. Thank you very much for the introduction. Bienvenue to Luxembourg. Welcome from uh, uh, Luxembourg. And I'm, uh, my, my name is uh, Romain Martin. As Stephanie said, I'm First Government Advisor at the Ministry of Higher Education and Research, responsible for coordinating uh, strategy and, uh, and and policy and I'm particularly pleased to introduce uh, this webinar which will give us the opportunity to explore the multiple possibilities of collaboration in the research and innovation field between uh, Luxembourg and, uh, and and Quebec. Let me stress that really this collaboration is, is a very important collaboration uh, for us. We had already an agreement since uh, uh, 2011 between uh, the government of Luxembourg and Quebec, which was then mainly focused on higher education and uh, the exchange of students. And since I, I would say two years from now, we have been uh, uh, working on, on uh, raising this collaboration uh, to yet an, another level, uh, really also making a, a real research collaboration out of, uh, uh, out of this very good context that we have already and that we have traditionally. And you will see that a lot is, is ongoing already between uh, Quebec and, uh, and Luxembourg. And this was very timely because in 2019, the Luxembourgish government uh, uh, decided to elaborate a national research and innovation strategy and where we identified a number of uh, key priority areas. And you will see that these priority areas are also the ones that uh, are at the center of the, uh, 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 of the agreement that we signed then in March 2021 between Quebec and, and Luxembourg and where already a number of things are, are ongoing. So these, what are these, these priority areas? Well, on the one hand, we have the transformation in industry and services that comes with uh, digitalization and also the uh, ecological transformation ahead of us. Uh, we have uh, the focus on sustainable and responsible development. Uh, we have personalized 
health and 21st century education. And if I look what we have written in our agreement, personalized and digital health, ICT, artificial intelligence, urban development, mobility, law, economics, and education, you see the large overlap of interest that exists between the uh, uh, research and innovation ecosystem in, in uh, Quebec uh, and in Luxembourg. And I think we share uh, an, another vision, which is a focus on, on really innovative, break, uh, groundbreaking and, and interdisciplinary research. And I think a first very nice success story in, in that sense is the ODAS program that we have launched together uh, between our National Research Fund and the Research Fund from Quebec, and where we will hear also a number of uh, first results already in, in this webinar. So thanks again to all the speakers uh, today, uh, to all those who have made this webinar possible. I think especially with uh, the challenges that lie ahead of us, ecological and digital transformation, uh, there are a number of, of fields where we share a common vision and where there are uh, possibilities uh, for collaboration. And so I'm looking forward also to the next time that uh, either we will be able to host uh, a litigation from, from Quebec, again, physically in Luxembourg or being present in, uh, in Quebec. I, I remember that my last, uh, one of my last uh, uh, professional visits was in, uh, in uh, February 2019, before the COVID crisis began in Quebec. And I'm really looking forward to meeting you again uh, physically, either here in Luxembourg or uh, or in Quebec, and for the moment, wishing you a very good time in this webinar, exploring the multiple possibilities of collaboration that be, that exist between the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg and Quebec. Thanks a lot, and have a nice webinar. Thank you very much, uh, Romain, for this introduction and for taking the time uh, to be with us uh, today. And uh, that then already takes us uh, to the first uh, speakers uh, from the Quebec site. Uh, and I'm very happy uh, to be able to introduce uh, Ms. Janice Bailey, Scientific Director of Fonds de Recherche du Québec, uh, Nature et Technologie, FRQNT, who uh, will be uh, our next speaker today. Welcome, Janice. Well, thank you so much. Uh, can you hear me? Perfectly. Thank you. Okay, great. And I'm going to try and uh, set up my, do you see my slide now? Yes, we see. Yay, it. I feel <laughs> so far so good. So thank you so much for uh, this, uh, this opportunity to speak and to talk about the Quebec research and innovation ecosystem. I'm here as the scientific director, the head of the FRQNT. I'll talk about that in a minute, so don't worry. And, uh, and uh, hopefully uh, provide uh, our participants today here with uh, an overview of what we can do and uh, uh, invite people to contact us uh, anytime uh, regarding questions or opportunities. So uh, again, thanks so much. Uh, would, I would really rather be in, in Luxembourg or have you here in beautiful Quebec City, but uh, you know, I'm surprised at how well our virtual meetings manage, uh, have managed over this past uh, uh, health crisis. So thank you again. So uh, let me see if I can get going. So quickly today, I'll talk about three big blocks. Uh, our ecosystem in Quebec. I'll talk about our fund, the fund of the research fund of which I'm the, one of the, the head of one of them, and our chief scientist, and some of the programs that we we host and have inspired our collaborations in the past. So, in terms of our uh, just a little bit of information about Quebec's uh, research and innovation ecosystem. So uh, we're a, a province, uh, a, a, one of the larger provinces in Quebec uh, or in Canada. We have eight and a half million inhabitants. Uh, our challenge is that we have a very uh, rapidly aging population. The economy is very dynamic, quite strong. We actually have a labor shortage. Um, employment is, is not an issue. Um, one thing that I'm very proud of and very impressed by uh, is that Quebec is a large geographically very large province, but we have a network of 18 universities, well over 50 colleges and uh, collegial innovation or tech transfer centers. And these uh, academic institutions are spread across uh, the province. So it's a really nice democratization, if you will, or access to information for uh, individuals um, in rural as well as in region um, uh, urban areas um, in, in the province. And I think that's really important 
important. Montreal, in fact, uh, consistently, according to the QS Best Student Cities, it's consistently in the top 10. Um, last year, it was uh, tied with Boston, I believe, for number nine. But, you know, just a few years ago, it was considered to be number one. It's a terrific city. And I can tell you that if I were a student, I would certainly want to be living in Montreal. In terms of our niche sectors, I saw that someone um, in the chat actually spoke asked about niche sectors or st sectors of strength in Quebec. And we have uh, uh, some of the ones I've listed here, you know, we're very strong in terms of aerospatial engineering, uh, the whole concept of clean energy, hydroelectricity, uh, uh, green hydrogen, Quantic, we have uh, some large uh, um, um, hubs here, artificial intelligence, where we're going to be hearing a lot about that um, from Milo today, uh, AI and the digital economy. Montreal is an international hub. Uh, video gaming technology, uh, bioagriculture or bio um, uh, agriculture and agricultural processing is important here. Uh, also resource management such as mining, forestry, computer technologies, engineering, uh, you know, life sciences, biomanufacturing um, is uh, on a renaissance right now. And uh, I don't want to uh, forget about also uh, the humanities, which are a huge strength in this province, culture, visual arts, uh, museums, tourism, and then um, pedagogy, higher education, those kinds of uh, uh, skills, very, very important uh, sectors in this, in this, uh, in, in Quebec. So here's just a very uh, kind of a, a schematicized vision of our ecosystem. So what's unique is uh, we have a chief scientist, not every province, not every state, not every country, in fact, has a chief scientist, but we have a chief scientist, Rémi Carillon, I'll show you a slide of him. And then he oversees, or is the PDG, or if you will, the CEO of three uh, independent but sister uh, research funds, the Quebec research funds um, that I'll present in a minute. So we are a very unique uh, kind of organization. No other uh, part of Canada, no other part of the United States, a few places in Europe have this kind of uh, regional uh, uh, provincial research fund that can support uh, independent and undirected uh, fundamental research. So we're very proud of that and we act as a really strong lever, uh, uh, lever uh, to help um, our researchers uh, obtain funding from uh, international or federal sources as well. So we support that research funding. There's a lot of uh, research organizations, universities, technological parks, uh, uh, research government, research labs, private research labs, whatnot. And then one thing that I, I noticed all, uh, that is quite new is we're trying to uh, really encourage a little bit more innovation and commercialization of this these these basic building blocks of, of, of knowledge that, that comes from independent uh, fundamental research. And so uh, we have a new uh, chief innovator in the province, Luc Serrois, and uh, uh, together with the chief scientists, they serve on the um, Innovation Council. And we have a speaker today from the Innovation Council, so I won't go into that. And uh, presumably he will be talking about a new government organization as well called Excellus, which is going to, which tries to um, accelerate, if you will, uh, uh, discoveries towards commercialization and and uh, uh, increase the value of uh, public uh, public investments and in research. So um, Quebec has a very tiny population, but we produce tenfold higher than we would expect of peer-reviewed publications. And the publications are of good quality because they are very highly cited uh, um, compared to other parts of the world. So, uh, you know, I would would say that, you know, working with Quebec researchers would be a really good uh, good move. Um, in terms of our, uh, you know, we talk about how we're a great research ecosystem, but the truth is, is that Canada uh, invests actually a very small portion of their GDP in R&D. Um, in Quebec, uh, our part of Canada, we are the highest investor, public investor in R&D, but still over the past few years, both Quebec and Canada have actually dropped uh, their investments in R&D compared to other countries, which have been increasing in the past years. Um, there has been uh, some uh, hope that this will change in the next, uh, in the upcoming year. We're waiting for our new research strategy in Quebec, and we're really pushing to be uh, a lot more in, in line with the OECD countries. Um, a, a very particular uh, com 
a particularity about Canada and uh, Quebec is uh, a lower proportion of our R&D investment comes from the private sector relative to other countries. So this is really a, an opportunity for Quebec and for Canada to improve their collaborations in that sense with the private sector. And in fact, my own personal research fund, we have been developing some new opportunities where we require private partnerships. So I'm very excited about that moving forward. So we have lots of opportunity. We've got lots of industrial clusters. We'll be hearing from that about from some representatives today, so I won't go into that. I'll just talk about uh, quickly our, our our structure here. Here's our chief scientist, Rémi Carillon, and he is that, like I said, he's the CEO, if you will, of three independent uh, research councils. So I'm head of Natural Sciences and Engineering Research Council, FRQNT. We also have councils on health and social sciences and humanities. Uh, it's uh, we're autonomous but we share services and we work together very closely and this has been I think a really great opportunity for um, creative and innovative uh, programs. So um, one thing that we, we focus on are uh, trying to use our research collaborative research among the three uh, agencies to address uh, social uh, challenges in in Quebec and so in Quebec our problems really are uh, focal maybe not problems, but maybe opportunities or challenges are related to demographic changes, uh, such as immigration, changing of our uh, aging of the population, sustainable development, climate change, uh, digital technologies we're going to hear about and how to manage those uh, new uh, technologies, as well as trying to develop uh, entrepreneurship and creativity. So these are um, um, strat uh, sectors where we work together to try and solve some of these uh, challenges. Our budget is uh, very much divided about one kind of one quarter, one quarter, one quarter, one quarter, if you will, in terms of non-directed or uh, fundamental research projects, grants. Uh, we support uh, also uh, careers, uh, young uh, or new researchers, as well as researchers at the college level. We also support a huge amount of our work goes to our financing goes to support scholarships, include including scholarship opportunities to uh, foreign students. So that's something for our colleagues in Luxembourg to bear in mind, as well as our strengths, our pillars of excellence, large research uh, groupments. So that's where our budget mostly goes. And we really believe that international partnerships really enhance scientific uh, impact. So uh, we're very excited about that. We don't have a dedicated envelope, but we uh, we are very creative and flexible in what we can uh, create with other countries, such as uh, this example with Luxembourg. So here's some of the hist uh, some of where we've. Uh, I'm afraid we have lost Janice, is that correct? So let's wait for a little bit and hopefully she'll be able to connect again. Janice, can you hear us? Okay, we will wait for a little minute to see if we can uh, have her back. Do you see me now? I'm sorry. Yes, there you are again. I can't Perfect. believe it. I, I lost uh, the application. It just went away. I'm so sorry. I'll just finish up in, 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 in a minute here once I get my finish the slides. I don't know if I can get them up again. I'll probably have to go choose this media. I'm sorry. I know that time. Oh, there we go. Okay, so I'll. that's where... So I'm just going to talk about some of the innovative programs by the FRQ. And I'm, I apologize uh, so much about that gap. I don't know why. I usually am pretty good. So again, talking about the three research funds, the three pillars, we're trying to uh, use intersectorial or 
multi-disciplinary uh, research between people and experts in health science, natural sciences and technology, and social sciences to come together to create a different kind of an e uh, research environment. But we also want to engage the public. So two uh, very interesting projects, um, programs that have been developed. The first one is called Dialogue, and that is a product or a program to encourage uh, researchers to work with the public to uh, kind of scientific communication. And I think as we know uh, in terms of the pandemic and uh, uh, we understand how important it is to communicate our science with the public so that they can understand and um, and, and in a respectful manner so that we can move ahead in, a, in, in an appropriate direction. Engagement is our program, which is really participatory science. So citizen science, where we have created duos of a public or a citizen with a researcher to explore uh, questions posed by the public. So that's interesting. And the ODAS program, as mentioned before, is really the program which is the most interesting. We're going to hear a little bit more about it today. And this is high risk intersectorial projects that really are designed to explore new ways of doing research um, and to solve complex problems. So here's the program, uh, our program uh, that we have uh, uh, carried out in collaboration with uh, the Fond National de Recherche du Luxembourg. And that is really a, a uh, bilateral program. Uh, we've had one call so far. I think the deadline is either is about right now for the second call. We have three years of this. Uh, we the teams must have two co PIs, one from Quebec, one from Luxembourg. And uh, here's the first uh, group. It's very interesting. I love this because my own personal researcher, I was a scientist for 25 years, actually touches on this. So it's really uh, a link between waste, weight loss surgery and the brain and how uh, environmental contaminants might um, uh, affect uh, the outcomes. So you can see this is a very creative. It's got it's a researcher from psychology as well as surgery. Um, uh, we're talking about uh, uh, environmental pollutants here, biotechnology, brain function. Very, very interesting. All, all three sectors represented. So my last slide is really just to talk quickly or just to highlight or show you uh, very much uh, what uh, uh, um, you know our, our current concerns are in Quebec so that we can share them with our colleagues here in Luxembourg. We do worry about uh, uh, or fight very hard to protect the uh, uh, the funding for basic research in Quebec. There's been a lot of other countries that have talked about massive reinvestment in R&D uh, for the post-pandemic recovery and so we're really pushing and encouraging our government to also uh, invest in basic research because that is absolutely necessary to for the innovation chain to develop. Uh, something that's important to us us, particularly in my research fund, science and technologies, is to uh, promote uh, the UN sustainable development goals. We also work a lot about on equity, diversity and inclusion, increasing the presence of women and uh, other underrepresented uh, individuals in the research ecosystem because we need their point of view. Uh, the best research is conducted by diverse people and the ODAS program shows that. Uh, we're part of the, we've signed on to the Coalition S, so uh, open science. Again, high risk research, citizen science, improving uh, communication between scientists, researchers, um, and the public, including the government. This is all very important. And all this to uh, develop uh, programs and, and to position ourselves um, for future global emergencies such as climate change with which quite frankly is the biggest uh, uh, global uh, stress right now. And to achieve all of this, uh, this will be, um, if we had a, a, we're working to strengthen our international strategy and Luxembourg and our collaborators uh, over there are uh, very key to that. So thank you very, very much. And uh, sorry for my little uh, technological blip. I don't understand what happened. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Janice, and no problem at all. We all know uh, this can happen from time to time. Uh, thank you very much also for the very complete uh, presentation. And you also already partly introduced uh, our next speaker, in fact, who is uh, Louis Gauthier, a Senior Director uh, at the Innovation Institute of Conseil, Conseil de l'Innovation uh, du Québec. Uh, um, so looking at the time, I will go uh, straight over to him and ask him uh, to take the floor. If we have him with us, yes, there he comes. Hello, hello, I'm Stephanie. 
uh, try to share my screen, but first, I'm not sure we'll be able to add anything else uh, compared to this presentation, the wonderful presentation from Janice. This was amazing, Janice. Thank you for the presentation. And you introduced us a little bit about the Innovation Council here. So maybe uh, thank you. Uh, first, I wanted to thank you, uh, Lux Innovation, for the invitation. I'm very pleased to be with you today. I will try to share my screen right now and just tell me if you can see the presentation. All right, let's see if it works. So um, yes, maybe a quick word about the uh, Innovation Council. It's a brand new organization here in Quebec uh, that has been created by the Ministry of Economy and Innovation. And uh, I mean, by brand new, I mean it's less, less than one year old, actually. And it's uh, it's been created uh, in the process of renewing the Quebec uh, Research and Innovation Strategy, which is a strategy about uh, approximately uh, uh, 600 million dollars that is renewed uh, this year actually 2022 for the next five years and uh, Janice mentioned it a little bit before but uh, the innovation can still uh, focus on translation of innovation uh, research and innovation to commercialization uh, hand in hand with Axelis uh, valorization organization I'll present it a little bit later uh, Quick overview. Okay, you can see my screen. Uh, for um, about the innovation ecosystem here in Quebec, when you're a company with an innovation project, you are surrounded with a lot of organizations. It could be a bit complex, but I will go in a little bit of detail. So you have the government agencies, and I do believe it's a, approximately the same in Luxembourg. Uh, we have also provincial and federal departments. So you see, it's, uh, you have Canada for the federal level and uh, Quebec for the provincial one. Also, funding organization, uh, granting agencies, investment fund for sure, angel investors, uh, foundation, for example. Also, we have uh, business groups that surround the companies that are doing innovation projects, for example, industry cluster, business association, chamber of commerce. It's pretty much the same everywhere else in the world, so no big news. Support organization, here we have also incubators, accelerator, innovation association, and we have something that we call innovation zone that is being developed by a ministry in innovation economy and innovation in quebec uh, we should be announcing uh, maybe one or a few of them in the, in the next few months uh, and it's focused on the physical hub of innovation meaning that we want to to make companies closer to research research organization a research center a university for example to to try to extract the expertise that we have in research and to translate it in uh, in industry and maybe the last point which is we i will be focusing on is research and innovation organization where we have universities research valorization access as i mentioned before college center for the transfer um, of technology we have 50 uh, 59 of them and uh, I will show you a little bit in detail. So this is quite a lot of uh, organization actually, and but it's not that much complex. But maybe, uh, maybe it could be when you see all the organization like uh, I'm presenting here. But it's not complicated. It's like uh, you have Aiden University here in Quebec, uh, College Center for Transfer of Technology. We have uh, 59 Android uh, spread across different sector. And their focus is really to scale up uh, R and D and research that has been doing uh, has been done, sorry, in university or academic research, and to transfer it uh, in industry. And I do believe in Europe, you have pretty much the same in France as well. Uh, research center, we have thirty-two of them on the on our network, and we have the sector industrial research group that I will focus on a little bit after. Social innovation focus uh, organization. Janice mentioned we have found on uh, innovation and social innovation, for example, and research valorization, which has Axelis. And I only ten minutes. I won't go into too much detail, but uh, this is approximately fourteen thousand researchers across Quebec, so uh, working on different fields, different research topic. And uh, I'm sure if you if you go through all of them, you will find someone with uh, to develop a partnership with. Uh, if you want to read them, uh, maybe one the, the easier way would be through the sector industrial research group. For example, we have nine and nine of them. I just mentioned it before that we have prompt which work on ICT, AI, microelectronics. We have aerospace, and those are related to the sectors that we are prioritizing here in Quebec. Uh, we also have Prima, which is advanced material, uh, innovation, electricity industry, transportation, electrification. 
Uh, we have Mentec on medical technologies, aluminum with the Centre Québécois de Recherche et de Développement de l'Aluminium, uh, biopharmaceutical with the Centre Québécois du Développement du Médicament, uh, metal transformation and industrial bioprocesses. Um, which is, what is interesting uh, about those organizations that uh, they also have envelope to found project and support innovation project between industry and research. And uh, uh, they actually can find, found, sorry, uh, about 40% of research project or innovation project uh, that fall in between TRL 1 to 3. I'm not sure you're very familiar with TRL, technology readiness level, maybe. Uh, basically, TRL 1 to 3 is a very fundamental research. When you go a little bit uh, further in terms of research, when you want to, to, to scale up the, the, the process or the R&D you're developing, uh, yeah, they can go up to 20% of funding. And it means 500k per year for a maximum of three years, which means about 1.5 million subvention for the project. And what is interesting here in Quebec is that, as I mentioned before, we have the federal and the provincial level, meaning that you can uh, add the uh, subvention from the provincial and federal, and you can get funding for innovation project, which is very fundamental, up to 80% of public funding here in Quebec. Um, maybe about the sector of interest, uh, I'm in focus on industry development with uh, Investissement Quebec which is fun here in Quebec that is supporting innovation, uh, innovation organization and industry, sorry. Uh, we have aerospace, agri-food, aluminum for sure, because we have a lot of raw material here in Quebec that we, knew, uh, we need to uh, do a valorization of. Uh, information, communication technologies, life science for sure, and mining and multimedia. We have a uh, huge hub here in Montreal with IDOS, Ubisoft, for example, and uh, other uh, gaming companies. Uh, you have the, the website link here if you want a bit more detail. Uh, I will provide the presentation after, uh, after the conference so you can have the link if you want to have a ch check the, the sector of interest. And uh, lastly, maybe the sector of interest in terms of R&D development focus is just a few of them, but it's uh, which are interesting artificial intelligence. And we have Mila that will be speaking right after me. So you will have a bit more detail about what you are doing in artificial intelligence. Canton Technologies, we have a different hub here, but the uh, University of Sherbrooke uh, in Quebec is developing a partnership with IBM on quantum computing. Uh, it's very advanced hub. They also have microfabrication, for example, and develop a lot of uh, interesting technology on this sector. We also have FinTech and LSTEC. I just gave you uh, those presentation here that you can find on montrealinternational.com on publication. Uh, it's a, a very much pretty detailed uh, presentation of all those sectors. So if you want to have more detail, you can find them uh, here in the and on, on this website, montrealinternational.com publication. So thank you everyone for uh, having me today. And uh, if you have any question, feel free to ask. Thank you very much, uh, Loic, uh, for this presentation and also for keeping to the allocated time. So we are perfectly yeah. uh, in time again. Thank you very much. And uh, we will then move on uh, to uh, our third speaker from the Quebec uh, ecosystem uh, for today. We have uh, so far heard a lot about the uh, Quebec R&I ecosystem in more general terms. Now we will hear more about uh, one specific area, which is uh, artificial intelligence. And for that, I will give the word uh, to uh, Catherine Sen, Director for Partnerships and Strategy at uh, Mila. So Catherine, the, word, the floor is yours. Merci, Stéphanie. Hi, everyone. I'm very happy to be here today. And uh, yeah, so today I'll focus uh, a bit more my presentation, of course, uh, on telling you about Mila and our vibrant uh, AI ecosystem in Quebec. Um, so Mila is actually the world's largest academic research lab in machine learning and deep learning, which are two high impact subsets of AI. And it has been founded by Dr. Yosha Benjo, who's one of the world leading experts uh, in AI, and he's a, pa a pioneer in uh, deep learning. He won the Turing Award, which is a kind of price equivalent to the Nobel Prize, uh, but in computer science, and he's the current scientific director of Mila. Uh, so Dr. Benjo founded Mila in 1993, and at that time it was an academic lab at the University of Montreal. But three, four years ago now, 
uh, a few uh, stakeholders. So the provincial government, the federal government, but also the two biggest universities in Montreal, so McGill University and the University of Montreal, um, decided to invest in a new version of this academic lab and created the MILA that we know today. So MILA is a non-for-profit organization that put together different uh, players to really propel the development of AI here in Quebec, but also everywhere in the world. Uh, the actual lab, MILA, is located in Montreal. Uh, the MILA workplace was designed to provide kind of an innovative environment to facilitate collaboration between professors, uh, their students, researchers, uh, applied AI experts, um, and also different types of businesses from startup to giant tech. So they can all find themselves physically <laughs> in the same space to exchange ideas and collaborate together. Of course, with the pandemic, our offices were closed for a few, a few months, uh, but our community uh, became very active online. And now we're playing with this kind of hybrid world where we're slowly coming back uh, physically in the space, but also being very active uh, online. Just beside Mila as well, there's a few uh, other companies that have decided to uh, call or bring their uh, AI, uh, AI research team uh, in Montreal. So, for example, Microsoft has opened their, um, their, their Canadian office in AI research uh, just beside Mila. So what does that mean to be the world largest academic research lab in deep learning and machine learning? So it's more than 85 world-class professors that are affiliated at MILA. Uh, and they bring along about 600 researchers. So these are students at the master, uh, uh, PhD, and postdoctorate level uh, how, uh, that are doing their research uh, with these professors. We have close also to 200 students that are enrolled in a very specific program on applied AI. So it's a two-year master program. They're usually, the profile of these students come from engineering, statistics, physics, et cetera, and then they come at NILA for two years to get that kind of upskilling in the latest advances in machine learning and deep learning. Um, we have about 80 partners and collaborators. So these are other research institutions, but mainly also businesses in Quebec, in Canada, but also located elsewhere in the world that are um, joining the mission of MILA. And I will tell you a little bit more about that in a few seconds. Um, and then we have about a team of 70 people, dedicated staff, which include AI, um, AI applied AI experts, uh, but also individual like myself to make all of this happen. So all of these people that I just named kind of rally around a key mission of MILA, which is to be a global pole for scientific advances that inspire innovation and the progress of AI for the benefit of all. And that aspect of the benefit of all for us is very important. Um, and this mission is fulfilled through four strategic pillars that you see on the slide. So first, AI talent. So we focus on attracting, training, and retaining a diversified pool of talent in AI. Uh, we support also, second pillar, the cutting and re research. We support our researchers so that they can make breakthrough in AI. Um, third, AI adoption. We make collaboration or um, projects to accelerate the adoption of AI by businesses or by the outside world of just the academic research lab. And finally, and that's very important for us, social influence, we focus on the ethical and responsible development of AI as well. Um, here at Mila, uh, we collaborate with external players in kind of three main ways that I wanted to highlight today. Uh, the first one is through our partnership program. So we've put together uh, this program for organizations that want to be part of our vibrant ecosystem because it's always about that. How do you make those connections and that you transfer knowledge? So we created the program. Um, second, research collaboration. We establish research collaboration between our researcher with other research lab, but also with the research lab within organizations. And lastly, we contribute to um, AI for good projects as well. So uh, with the time that I have, I'd like to give you just a few examples of um, what these collaboration lead to. So here you see a list of a lot of, um, a lot of, uh, part, uh, a lot of organizations that are all partners at Mila. So as mentioned, we have about over 60 industrial partners from startups to global companies in tech or healthcare. And by becoming partners, um, these companies have access to recruiting opportunities, training offerings, 
and kind of like a privileged access to our ecosystem uh, by attending events and meeting our researcher professor and also other players in the ecosystem. Um, some of our partners also rent a corporate lab space. So they've kind of opened a small office within the walls of Mila, uh, which kind of really gives them a, a seat in the front row of uh, AI research collaboration. This is uh, some of our collaborating institutions. So we collaborate with these institutions that some are located in, in Quebec, in Canada, but also around the world. Each relation is quite unique and really tailored to the needs. So for example, we have established like a student exchange program with some of them. Other were working, collaborating on a research project. Um, so, and I would say like every month we, <laughs> we have a new partner that wants to participate uh, and, and collaborate with, with Mila. So in the second aspect that I mentioned in terms of research collaboration, there are kind of main like two ways, if you want, that we've seen that uh, these research collaboration are happening. First, some industrial researcher will work with Mila researcher on fundamental research projects. So last year, about a third of all the published papers uh, by our researcher were co-authored by industry researcher. So when I talk about industry researcher, it's really, you know, people that will uh, have a role of AI scientists, for example, within an organization, and then they will work with our researcher on specific uh, challenges that they encounter. The second aspect that you see on the right side of the slide, it's that some industrial partner will work on applied research project with our team of applied AI researchers. So these people are kind of employees of Mila. They have a very uh, great expertise in applied AI. And then they work together a little bit like consultant with some organizations. So I've put two examples here. Dialogue is a, um, a, a very innovative a startup, or now I would say scale up in, in Quebec, in Montreal. And for example, they work together on a chatbot with reinforcement learning, which is a specific technique in AI for, tele, uh, for this telemedicine startup. Uh, another example of project that they work with Hydro-Quebec, uh, which is uh, our energy uh, company here in Quebec. And they work on predicting solar uh, irradiance in Quebec and the US uh, coast, uh, coast with deep learning to optimize the electrical management of the grid. So we have a few of them, but these are just examples of very hands-on practical project that we've been involved in. Uh, and finally, Mila collaborates with different organizations to really lead initiatives for the ethical and responsible development of AI. And we work on very, again, hands-on project to, for example, uh, eliminate gender and racial bias in written text or tools to help fight uh, climate change. So um, this topic is very core to, I would say, most of our members. And so we always try to uh, work in that direction and always happy to make some collaboration on those kinds of projects as well. Let me uh, quickly end my presentation uh, by showing you an example, because often all of this sounds great, but it's like, OK, what does it mean? What's the impact that we're trying to have for uh, some of these um, businesses in relation to the adoption of AI. So this is example of a, one of the partner of Mila. Uh, it's a UK based startup in the biotech AI field. And um, they really benefited from their collaboration with Mila. So let me walk you through. So in 2019, they became partner of Mila, decided to open their first office outside of the UK in Montreal within the Mila uh, workplace. Um, then they started to work on a research project with two of our professor in their lab. Then they hired Mila student as an intern for a summer. <clears throat> Sorry, the, the connection was great. And so then they hired them as a full-time employee. So we all know that talent and attracting talent is quite hard. So they succeeded in, in getting a very um, a, a, a great a, a new employee in their team. Then they co-published two papers with our prof professor. And now they're just uh, starting to work on a second research project. Um, so just wanted to share, this is one of example um, uh, of many others that all, all kind of all have their story, but just thought it would be interesting to share that one. And finally, I will just end my presentation with this slide. We always kind of like to see whatever kind of key, some of our key impact indicator from 2018 to 2021. I think Mila grew immensely within the last year, just like the innovation ecosystem in Quebec generally. So you see a few number of years, but you know, Mila started with 12 research chair in 2018, and now we have uh, 48 research chair. Uh, the number of partners grew three times 
um, in three in three years, and you see the number of applied project articles that were published. So we're really happy to share kind of these numbers to see that our ecosystem is very vibrant. And of course, if anyone attending here would like to think about a way to collaborate with us, um, uh, you can, of course, uh, write me an email and uh, connect with us and we'll be happy to take the call. Merci beaucoup, uh, Catherine. Uh, thank you very much for this uh, very interesting uh, presentation and also for the offer uh, to uh, stay in touch. And uh, I would also like to invite uh, all our participants to take the opportunity of the presence uh, of uh, our speakers to ask questions, uh, either in the chat or in the question section, that uh, they will certainly be uh, very happy uh, to answer. So thank you very much uh, once again to you and also to the other two uh, speakers uh, from the Quebec side. And we will now move on uh, to uh, the speakers uh, from the Luxembourg side who will uh, say uh, a few words about the uh, opportunities uh, for collaboration uh, with Quebec. Uh, and uh, first of all, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Helena Borg, who's already uh, on the screen here with me, uh, who is Head of International Relations at the Luxembourg National Research Fund, uh, FNR, and uh, whom I'm happy to uh, give the word to now. Thanks a lot, Stephanie. So welcome all to this very nice webinar. Um, I have been asked to provide you with some information on funding opportunities for collaborations with Luxembourg and Quebec. So um, this is why I actually am not going to show you an introduction of um, the FNR in Luxembourg, but just a few words. So uh, we are the national funding agency. And as any funding agency, um, we are providing funding for people, for projects and for programs. And um, I'm more than happy to share more information with you later on, but here I really would like to focus on joint funding opportunities with Quebec and Luxembourg. And uh, as you can see on my first slides, there are actually four options. And um, the first one has already been mentioned, and that's actually the one I would like to start with, and that's the UDAS program. Because here we are strongly collaborating um, with um, the Fonds Quebec and um, as has already been introduced, it's actually really a joint funding program. So um, for joint proposals which are submitted to the ODAS call, um, and if they are retained for funding, um, the um, Fonds Quebec is actually paying up to $100,000 on their side, and uh, the FNR covers the Luxembourg part also with up to 100,000 euros. And um, as already indicated, this is aiming for highly interdisciplinary research projects. Um, it's I've faced in the past um, that there is always a slight confusion on the Luxembourg side if we are calling it intersectoral, as it's called in Quebec, because intersectoral somehow means, uh, in, in Luxembourg at least, <laughs> it means um, research in collaboration with industry or with private partners. but. While this is also possible in UDAS, this is not really what we are talking about. We are really talking about interdisciplinary projects and high-risk projects. And um, this is also um, reflected in, um, in the consortia of um, the research submitting proposals, where um, these researches need to be from different research disciplines, and these disciplines need to be from different sectors, sorry to come back, which is supported by one of the three um, research funds in Quebec. Um, well, as I said, it's it's for projects, it's for short-term projects um, of a duration of one year, although the funding could be spent within two years, um, but um, it's surely not a program to fund joint PhD students. However, we have another possibility for that. But this is unfortunately not the right one, but we're going to jump to that one. That's actually the funding of um, PhD candidates in Luxembourg. Um, now you say, okay, <laughs> what about uh, PhD funding in Luxembourg? The thing is that um, the Luxembourg labor law and also the FNR allows that these PhD candidates may spend some time abroad during their employment at a Luxembourg host institution. And this could be, in fact, by Luxembourg's labor law, up to 50% of their time. 
And so um, this really also enables um, collaboration and having joint um, PhDs together with um, institutions in Quebec, although um, the PhD candidates, if it's an AFR incoming, need to be employed at the Luxembourg institution. There's also the possibility if um, the candidates are Luxembourg citizens or have been residents in Luxembourg for long, for more than five years, that they could um, apply directly with an institution in Quebec for an AFR grant at the FNR. Um, it's a bottom-up program. It's open to all research disciplines and funding programs. And uh, we are providing funding for three years plus one additional year extension if required. Um, very important for our Quebec partners the tuition fees are not covered. Um, as you might have heard, there aren't any tuition fees in Luxembourg asked for. There is an administrative fee, which is very low, um, but we are not asking for tuition fees in Luxembourg. And so this is also not covered within the AFR grants. And um, for the AFR individuals, it's an application done by the PhD candidates themselves jointly with their supervisors. Um, what we are currently developing for um, a call to be launched by the end of this year is a so-called AFR bilateral. And here things are slightly different because here a consortium of researchers, so a Luxembourg supervisor jointly with a Quebec co-supervisor could apply for a grant which covers up to two positions, which could be either PhD or postdoc candidates. And um, again, the candidates need to be employed then in Luxembourg, but they, but this time they have to spend at least 20% of their time then in the partner institution in Quebec. And different from the individual grants, the candidates do not need to be known at the time of the application. So um, the um, supervisors could agree on a joint project fund or a joint project idea uh, which would cover um, up to two positions. And then um, if um, it's granted, they have some time to actually um, seek and identify the right candidates. Um, the grants covered herein are, uh, again, for the PhD up to four years and for postdoc up to two years. And actually to enable the mobility requested, uh, we are also offering um, some mobility money um, on our side. And as said, um, this call isn't launched yet, so you won't find any information on this on our internet side. Um, but um, please keep an eye open, it's going to be launched soon. And to jump back to another funding program the FNR is offering, it's a mobility scheme for researchers. And the idea here is um, that we promote the exchange between uh, Luxembourg research groups and really leading research um, groups abroad, like the example we just got uh, from uh, Quebec with Mila. And of course, we would like to, to foster um, innovative research with this. And um, we are offering the possibility for a mobility um, to come to Luxembourg, which is mobility in, or for Luxembourgish researchers from postdoc level onwards um, to go to excellent um, research groups abroad. And um, we are rather flexible in these grants. Um, so you could um, have a mobility from six weeks, which could even be split in, into two um, times uh, spent abroad, up to one year entire mobility to be spent within the period of three years. Um, for this, we are having uh, two calls per year and uh, we're gonna, from next year onwards, mark one, um, um, earmark one of the grants for collaborations with Quebec. So we have also done this uh, with some of our other um, international funding partners, um, like the Ricken Institutes in Japan, and uh, with um, the Berkeley um, University, UC Berkeley, um, where we also earmark grants um, to enable um, on, and to foster this collaboration on an international level. So all this was now very quick. Um, I would like to thank you. And please, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to contact me or my colleague Azal, who is actually um, the expert on any uh, Canadian and especially uh, Quebec collaboration 
at the FNR. And also, um, I really would like to ask you to stay updated and um, to have a look in our FNR info and uh, to sign in on our website. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, uh, Helena, for this presentation. And I see that there is already a first question or a couple of questions even uh, in the chat. But maybe we can uh, give you the time to have a look at them and then come back to them in the Q&A uh, session right after the uh, other presentations. You yes, would like to say something. Um, I just wanted to say that, of course, I'm uh, happy to share the slides to all participants later on so that you actually have um, the slides and the links indicated on the slides. Perfect. Thank you very much. So with that, we will then uh, move on uh, to uh, our next speaker, uh, who is actually one of the co-hosts uh, of uh, this uh, webinar today and uh, whom you saw on the screen with me a little bit earlier. Uh, that is uh, Benjamin Cassier, Director for R&D and Innovation Support at uh, Lux Innovation. Uh, and he will speak a little about, bit about uh, Lux Innovation and the opportunities there are in the framework of Lux Innovation's activities. So Benjamin, the floor is yours. Merci Stéphanie. Hello everyone. Uh, so I'm going to share my, the slides directly. Meanwhile, effectively, I'm going to present you our the National Innovation Agency very quickly. Uh, but I will also run you a little bit. Uh, we have seen the research activities. We have seen the more the academic approach. I would also like to put forward a little bit the economical side of innovation. And in that sense, of course, the companies uh, and the different sectors. So just for information, Lux Innovation is a public-private partnership uh, between the Ministry of Economy and the Ministry of Higher Education and Research on one side but also the FIDIL, which is the Association of Industry, the Chamber of Commerce, and the Chamber of Skilled Crafts. Uh, the agency was established in 84. Uh, main focus was to drive uh, new economical developments. And uh, today our focus lays in stimulating and supporting innovation in, in key industry sectors, such as manufacturing and materials, but also automotive, information and communication tech, clean tech, health tech, and the space sectors. And in the more recent years, we're also working on the wood sector and in creative industries. Um, we have uh, updated our strategy recently uh, for the next uh, four years. And because we are working on international traction and on national traction, we have put our work in the scope of larger entities. Of course, on European side, there is a European digital strategy, there is a strategy on data, there is some elements dedicated to industry, etc. But we're also taking into account uh, the sustainable development agendas and the Green Deal of the European Commission, because these are priorities for our industry, but also to innovate. And it makes sense to align our efforts with the general efforts on European level. But also on national level, there has been uh, Romain Martin earlier from the Ministry of Higher Education and Research who presented the priority thematics. And also in, in the framework of our collaboration with Quebec, there are some priority thematics. And uh, the Ministry of Economy recently published uh, Wirtschaft von Moore on Wirtschaft von Moore. And uh, in that sense, we have taken that element into account as well, because I'm just going to show you quickly a slide, not, not to go too much into detail of it, but the idea is there that without having direct funding uh, opportunities, because Lux Innovation is not a funding agency, it's the Ministry of Economy who supports uh, innovation and research activities in companies and SMEs, but just to demonstrate that there are some priority topics, right, that are now on your screen, like the accelerated digitized economy for societal benefits, the circular economy transition. Uh, we are also working on different value chains. We have seen how important they are now in the recent COVID crisis. Um, and, and then we have some uh, horizontal activities as well. So based on these thematics, we see that there are priorities that are aligned with the commitment that has been signed between Quebec and Luxembourg and with the different activities of the sectors present in Luxembourg. So Lux Innovation, as, as innovation agency, how do we work? Um, we, our actions are uh, mainly twofold. First of all, of course, we work as much as possible on company by company level. So our advantage of a smaller, comp of a smaller country 
origin is to know most of the companies who are here and who want to work and who are able to innovate. So we are there to raise awareness, identify needs, also propose best tools that would be most relevant for their initiatives and stimulate them and support them as much as possible. That's really as tailor-made as possible, company by company and then sector by sector. And then on a certain sense, we are contributing to the economic development of the country because we want to innovate also by collaborative means, meaning supporting collaborative uh, initiative, transsectoral initiatives, but also implementing priorities of our government and try to see how we can set them up. Um, I talked earlier today uh, in, the, in the webinar, I think it was uh, Janice uh, was speaking about thematic research, or, or we could also call it a little bit like mission-oriented research, right? So we see that there are thematics, we see that there are these priorities, and we find ways to push that forward. Um, <clears throat> so uh, on operational levels, I would say that there are three main axes in, in Lux Innovation. One is really oriented towards company relationship and support. And there we are, we have these cluster, national cluster initiatives with the priority sectors that I mentioned before. We have specific tools for SMEs. We have also been working on the Digital Innovation Hub. Uh, there was a precedent uh, conference between Quebec and Luxembourg where we addressed that topic. So if there are any questions on the Digital Innovation Hub, I'll be glad to answer them later. Uh, where there's also an activity from, from our agency which is more oriented to international attractivity. Uh, finding shared interests and see how companies could work in Europe through Luxembourg or with Luxembourg. And we have specific programs for startup acceleration and startup supports. Uh, I have a slide on that a little bit later. And more specifically, uh, we are also helping the Minister of Economy by uh, providing support for companies to prepare their grant submission and to make sure uh, everything is in line with the legal context and uh, regulations. And we do this also on the European side. Um, to give you some information on the funding, so Helena presented us the National Research Fund just before. I, um, I presented what I want to talk about maybe a little bit more is the Ministry of Economy that can support R&D activities and innovation aid for SMEs for companies that are established in Luxembourg. Uh, the tools that are, that are listed here for the FNR are tools that could be used for collaborative work between academy or RTOs and companies. And then of course we have the European research programs that at least in Luxembourg most people know uh, and I'm quite sure that many people in Quebec uh, know them as well. So these are the different tools that are available to fund and to support financially R&DI activities. Um, a specific highlight maybe recently is that we have set up a collaborative platform called researchcollaboration.lu. Uh, it was launched earlier this year. It was oriented, it, has a, it had an objective to, to have a first joint call between the Ministry of Economy and the FNR, so the Fonds National de Recherche, to uh, support uh, projects in the digital, digital health technologies. The objective was mainly to have uh, to push forward collaborative research between public and private partnerships, and that by having only one point of entrance for the initiatives. Uh, this platform was built mainly with three function, functions and goals. It's of course to find the partners to be able to discuss uh, your initiative in private and confidential uh, areas. The get the funders perspective also, meaning that people from Lux Innovation or people from National Research Fund were able to, to discuss and to stimulate the, the construction of the project. And of course, to prepare a common proposal that could be submitted at the same time for academy and research instead of two different applications. Uh, the deadline was uh, last week or a couple of weeks ago, so no results yet. Um, no official results yet, but it was a very um, effective effort, interesting effort for us to create um, collaborative, more collaborative patterns. Um, we could use that tool again, uh, and I invite everyone to stay in touch with that platform or our newsletters to, to see what's coming up in uh, 2022. 
Um, another program that's very interesting, maybe for collaborative research, is the European RTI uh, program, which is Horizon Europe. So there used to be the Horizon 2020 program that finished last year. Um, it's a program that's open to all member states of the European Union, but also to associated countries. And I know that uh, as a country, Canada was uh, eligible in the previous program that ended at the end of last year. I believe negotiations are ongoing for this program. Nevertheless, collaboration is possible even if the funding of, on the European side is not yet available for people in, in Quebec. Um, we very much appreciate this program in Luxembourg. We have one of the highest uh, success rates in Europe uh, because we try to support initiatives uh, quite early and give the most personalized support in uh, setting up uh, consortia. So we have different kinds of services that we try to tailor made as much as possible by monitoring all the opportunities, make sure that uh, if you're active in a certain field and in touch with us, that you are aware about what's coming up, when it's coming up, who is, who is, in who is involved, who could be potential partners, and then everything that goes until the submission of your, of your documents to the uh, European Commission. Uh, we have in the team uh, seven uh, thematic experts who are specific activity in these uh, actions, so they have the double language. I would say they can translate um, research to business and business to research, which what, what are things that we are really looking for. Uh, yes, just a short example, I, will, I was going to speak uh, about the company that's Paul Wirt. Uh, who is who's been established in, in, in Luxembourg since 1870. It's an international engineering company and uh, it's also a technology provider for global iron making industry. And they have uh, joined recently in European consortium called Multiply, Multiply uh, which is um, there to study the opportunity to use renewable energy sources to produce hydrogen. And so you, you see the consortium or the partnership, and that's typically a European funded project, which for a company like Paul Wirt is quite interesting because it's enabling them to enlarge their network, their collaborative network, to benefit from other uh, users of the technology that eventually could be developed, like NG or Neste. But at the same time, they're working with one of the best research centers in Europe, like SEVA. Uh, and then all these activities are funded by the European Commission. Um, such kind of projects, there are many different ones, there are opportunities in different sectors, so I invite you, if you have any questions, to contact us. The TRL level, uh, not to be discussed today. Um, but then we were talking about funding, but not all initiatives can be or need to be funded. I think that's also a very interesting topic. If we want people to work together, sometimes the projects are so, I would say, interesting on, on, on private side and company side, that the company is going forward if there is investment or there is not investment. And here are some examples um, without much detail. But for example, there is a construction supply chain study going on. Uh, there are some shortages here in, in Europe. And we are working on a study with different companies and different research centers in Luxembourg. We're also working to build up a construct deconstruction platform as mine, provide solutions and data on what's coming out of deconstruction. And in, this, in a similar way, we have also concrete recycling. Uh, we are setting up a digital platform to link offer and demand in the wood services and provide new services on this digital platform. Uh, we're also working on initiatives on glass recycling, for example, in the, in the construction business. Um, I'm almost finished. I just wanted to say a quick uh, a, a quick information on the Fit for Start program, which is a program that is launched twice a year in Luxembourg. It's specific support for startups, but sometimes, but you as a star, if you have the intention to uh, create a startup, you can even submit and um, apply for uh, the pitching without having incorporated yet. So even for researchers who have an ID who are close to the market, who have done their work and study, these tools, these uh, interactions are available and could be interesting. And uh, as for an example, for example, Passbolt is an open source password manager. Uh, it has come through the Fit for Start program. 
and which is now a company that recently raised uh, 3 million euros. So I hope this was uh, the, in, informative for you. You see that there are different collabor collaboration patterns, funding opportunities. Um, I was more oriented towards sectors and thematics and, and, and innovation, but I'm glad to answer any question if you would have any later on. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Benjamin, for this uh, very comprehensive uh, presentation and all the good uh, tips uh, to our participants uh, here today. Uh, to the participants, again, please do not hesitate to ask your questions in the chat or in the questions uh, section. As Benjamin said, he will uh, be happy uh, to answer them. And uh, we will, uh, as we're already slightly delayed, uh, move uh, straight on uh, to our two last speakers, our two uh, researchers who will uh, uh, tell us about their uh, collaboration experiences uh, with Quebec. And we first of all have uh, Professor Dr. Jacques Klein from the Interdisciplinary Center for Security, Reliability and Trust, SNT, at the University of Luxembourg. And uh, Jacques, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Stephanie. Can you see my screen? Everything is okay? Okay, Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, hello everyone. So, my name is Jacques Klein, and yes, I'm professor at the University of Luxembourg, uh, working in the SNT uh, Center. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizer for for the, uh, of this event for the invitation. Thank you very much. And um, before to present a couple of examples of collaborations with research teams in Quebec, uh, let me uh, let me start by introducing myself. So, so and I start with some some picture here uh, so yeah, some picture of me in quebec on the mont royal uh, but uh, you can see almost 10 years of 10 years of difference between the, the picture on the left and the one on the right and but i put this picture to not forget to say that uh, in my opinion one of the most important ingredients of a successful collaboration is to actually go on site and discuss in person with colleagues so here, when I present example of collaboration with colleagues in Quebec, this means that uh, actually I really went in Quebec discussing with them, and it was uh, super fun. <coughs> so, as already said, so I'm working at the University of Luxembourg, and the University uh, of Luxembourg is divided in three faculties and three centers, uh, all at the same level. And I'm working in one of these centers uh, called SNT. Okay. Uh, SNT is uh, a leading research institution uh, focusing on ICT. Uh, several of uh, our members successfully acquired ERC grants in the past, and uh, 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 this is the most prestigious research grant in Europe. And also, uh, most of our team are worldwide leaders in the respective research domain. And one of the main mission of SNT is to boost R&D investments. And how to do this is, is by establishing partnerships with companies in Luxembourg and abroad. Uh, in in SNT, uh, so together with my colleague, uh, Professor uh, Tega Wendebisionde, we are leading a research group, Trucks, called Trucks. Okay, and uh, Trucks is composed of about uh, 20, 25 uh, researchers. And you can see that the PhD students are the main workforce of, of the team. But this is not a surprise. Um, in Trucks, so we are focusing on software. This, so for us, software is key. Okay. And we are working on three main research pillars around software. So the first one is uh, software security. So in this domain, so we are interested in detecting vulnerabilities. To, we also uh, dev uh, develop tools to analyze Android applications, for instance, to detect uh, data leaks. We also check uh, GDPR compliance. Uh, we also intend to detect malware with new approach based on machine learning and AI. A uh, second main pillar is, um, is, uh, is software repair. It's everything around bug detections, uh, patch recommendation or fixed recommendation, but also automated uh, program repair. This is a really is a really hot topic this day in software engineering. Automatic program repair is so we, we develop tools that will automatically correct or fix a software and program without any human intervention intervention. 
So everything is fully automated. Of course, this is a dream, but we are working on this. Uh, and then, so we, we are using um, so several techniques. Uh, it's, uh, the, the, the last pillar is explainable software. And we are using several techniques like information retrieval, natural language processing, machine learning, explainable, explainable machine learning. Uh, and here, mainly to address the challenges faced by our industrial partners, such as, such as BGL and BNP Paribas in the fintech domain. And actually, so we apply uh, what we are doing in, in domain like Android, FinTech, Smart Home, and any kind of business critical system. Okay, now let's come to the collaboration. But actually, so in Quebec and in particular in Montreal, there are plenty of researchers working on software and software engineering. So, uh, sorry, for instance, here, so, and it's not, so we collaborate actually in, with almost all the universities in Montreal, with University of Montreal, of course, with uh, UCAM, with Concordia, with Politique Montreal, with McGill University. We, we have, we have plenty of collaboration with, with this university and with the professor of this university. But let me simply show two, uh, two example, to, to show two, two of this, uh, of this uh, collaboration. Uh, the first one is this one. So the first one is around so bug detection is automatic program repair. And uh, sorry for the background noise. Uh, on this topic, we are collaborating with colleagues from the University of Montreal, but also with, uh, we are also discussing with companies of Ubisoft, Ubisoft in, in Montreal, uh, which is quite big in Quebec, you, you know. Huh? And you can imagine that uh, you can imagine that for a company like Ubisoft that are developing millions of lines of codes, so uh, detecting bugs faster is key. So it's why so we are working with them, and we we are so we are close to to sign a partnership with them to work on these thematics. So and one idea, so I could present tons of slides of the uh, on this on this topic of bug detection and program repair, but uh, today I will simply say that one of the most important questions to solve. Uh, to answer to solve this problem of uh, bug detection uh, is the question of to represent code and what is the best code representation to feed the AI algorithm that you will use to perform uh, some task. Uh, in other words, what is the best embeddings for the code? Because in fact, when you are, so you can see on the top some an example of a code snippet here. Actually, we cannot give this code snippet directly to an AI algorithm. You need first to pre-process uh, this code to, to transform this code into a vector, and you will give this vector to the AI algorithm. Okay, and here we are simply show and one uh, cool example where we actually we transform this code snippet into a color image at the bottom. Okay, through so several steps, and then we 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 feed the CNN algorithm with this image to perform tasks so, such as cone clone detection, vulnerability detection code completion, code classification, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, yes, and then I, I have a, a last slide and uh, on uh, where we have a collaboration with uh, Prof, uh, Professor Nawel Mawa, um, Mawa from, um, from UCAM, and now I think she is working in the University of Quebec at ETS, and uh, with a student also with Arthur. And here we are interested in detecting what is called security relevant commits. Uh, maybe you don't know what is a commit. So usually, when so um, you when you develop a big software system, uh, actually we are not wor working alone. So many developers are working together on the same code base uh, that is shared on a central repository. So it's a central remote repository that you can see on the top. So uh, the developer once he, 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 he make a, he do something in the in the, in the code, uh, he need first to commit the change and then push to the central uh, repository in a way that everyone is aware that of the change. And so uh, in this work uh, with Nawel and Arthur, we are working to detect so to detect security related commit, meaning that commit that that fix as uh, a vulnerability. And we are using, using AI and again machine learning to, to detect such commits. And why this is important? Because um, if a, sec, uh, a commit fix a, a vulnerability, actually it's important to inform everyone that a, that a vulnerability has been fixed uh, in a way that then can update their own code. Okay, this concludes my, my presentation. Of course, we are open to, to collaboration. So if you want to discuss with us, do not hesitate to reach us. Thank you.
Thank you very much, uh, Jacques, for uh, for this uh, nice presentation uh, of uh, your collaboration uh, with Quebec. Uh, once again, uh, please do not hesitate to ask uh, questions in the chat or the question section to Jacques. And we will move on uh, to our second researcher uh, who will uh, present uh, his experiences, and that is Dr. Andy Chevignier from the Luxembourg Institute of Health. And I hope he is with us. I cannot see see him quite yet, but I'm sure he will be there in a second. There he comes. Welcome, Andy. Okay. So uh, thank you very much for, for the introduction. Share my slide. Can you see my slide? Or... Not yet. Can you please guide me or to, to share it then after? So it is normally uploaded. Have you clicked on choose this media? Um, where exactly? Um, normally, yes. So Share I'm... button and then share a PDF presentation. Yes. Okay. So, okay, sorry. Perfect. Thank so, you. So, sorry for the delay and thank you for the introduction. And um, I'm very glad to have the opportunity to share my experience and to explain how we establish a collaboration uh, between the Luxembourg Institute of Health and Research from, from Quebec, a collaboration that is built on common research interests and also complementarities. So uh, before I start, just a few words of background to explain how and why we have established this collaboration three years ago. So in my team at the Luxembourg Institute of Health, we investigate the membrane receptor, so molecular switches that are expressed at the surface of the cells and that are really important uh, for many physiological processes, but that are also uh, down, uh, modified and um, uh, deregulated in many pathologies. And in fact, uh, about one third of the currently marketed drug uh, target this family of receptor. And we realize that, in fact, most of these drugs only um, uh, target a few number of these uh, uh, receptors. So there is still a, a lot of uh, place for the development of new medication targeting this family of receptor. But the study of this receptor, uh, the development of drug is really difficult because you can appreciate that these uh, receptors are quite complex in their structure and interaction. So there is really a, a requirement to um, uh, use and apply different and complementary uh, expertise, but also to access state-of-the-art uh, technologies. And so this also means uh, to establish collaborations. And so uh, my collaboration with uh, uh, Quebec started three years ago when I first met Professor Michel Bouvier, the director of the Institute of Research in Immunology and Cancer at the University of Montreal. And uh, Michel is also a, a pioneer and an expert in the use of uh, a small biophysical sensor in order to investigate the activation of these receptors and also that are really useful for drug development. And so from this first meeting, 
we um, had many exchanges of uh, IDs, information, material, and uh, these uh, many exchanges uh, led, for instance, uh, last year to uh, a first joint publication between uh, our two teams. Um, and at Luxembourg, uh, we, in Luxembourg, we identified a new ligand for one receptor. And in fact, in this uh, research, the biosensor from Michel, but also its mentorship were really uh, important. And this went, in fact, in two directions. And recently, um, my team uh, in, in Luxembourg helped uh, Michel, and we provided generated data that were uh, used to support one of uh, his study that was uh, recently uh, uh, submitted. Um, and uh, this uh, also was quite successful and motivated us to, to continue the collaboration. And last year, we, uh, in my team, we identified uh, a new opioid receptor. It was really uh, an important uh, finding with many uh, possible impact in terms of drug uh, discovery. And it was really uh, visible at the national, but also at the international level because of the opioid crisis, because this identification, in fact, led to the possibility to develop new drugs with a um, safer profile. And you are all aware of the opioid crisis uh, that is uh, present in, in the US, in Canada, but also in Europe. And so uh, with Michel, we decided to drive together a project and to set a consortium of different researchers to be able to better understand the role of this new receptor in the opioid network, but also to have a, a multidisciplinary approach and also to develop drugs to test also this drug in different animal models. And so I was really um, uh, happy to see that uh, all these uh, requirements and expertise were present in, um, in Quebec and that thanks to, to Michel, we were able, in fact, to uh, gather uh, a consortium of different researchers from the University of Montreal, but also from the University of Sherbrooke, having really different expertise. And all together, we decided, in fact, to uh, apply recently for an ODAS project with a project that we called Opioid Multilevel Regulation and Modulation of the New Opioid Peptide Scavenger ACKR3. So, with this, I would like really to thank uh, my partners in Quebec from the University of Montreal, from the University of Sherbrooke. And I would like also to thank uh, the, the FNR for the continuous uh, support and you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Andy, for this uh, very interesting presentation and uh, good luck with your application uh, to the ADAS uh, program. We wish you all uh, the best for that. And thank you also uh, for, for being with us uh, today. Um, so that actually brings us uh, to the end uh, of uh, our different uh, presentations. Uh, um, what we still we also reach uh, more or less the end uh, actually of our webinar, but we still have a couple of minutes to answer uh, a few questions. If there is still anything pressing that you would like to ask, please do not hesitate uh, to write it in the question section. And I will just have a look uh, to see whether there are any questions there that still need to be answered. I do not think uh, that this is the case for now. So if there are no questions at the moment, and I understand that uh, it is starting getting late, especially in Luxembourg. <laughs> so uh, you might want to, to uh, start your evening. And uh, so um, I will, uh, and of course, you, oh, I see that a couple of questions are now coming up. 
So whether you are going to uh, receive a copy of for the different slides, uh, yes, that is going to be the case. We are going to ask all uh, the uh, speakers whether they agree to this, of course, uh, and we will share all the presentations that we receive uh, then with you after the session. So I will then give the word uh, to uh, Benjamin Castier as uh, with Lux Innovation, uh, the host of today's uh, webinar, so that he can say a few concluding words uh, at the end of this webinar. Benjamin, please go ahead. Thank you, thank you very much, Stephanie, and thank you very much for, for, for hosting uh, and mon monitoring this uh, entire webinar. Uh, I would like to thank all our speakers, um, and especially our, our new colleagues from, from Quebec, um, I think we, we are trying to setting up bridges uh, virtually for the moment to, to improve our collaborations between our, our two, two countries and regions. And, and we are looking forward to make them as real as possible. Uh, and by having moments like, like today, this morning or this evening, depending where you are, it's, it's the first elements of, of concrete, of information and instead information, as Jacques Klein also said from the SNT, that we have to make real and that we have to exchange and come together and, and make concrete opportunities. And, and therefore, uh, to come together, we have heard today that there are uh, funding opportunities by the FRQNT that, that uh, Janice Bailey presented earlier. Um, there, is, uh, there are priorities, we have shared priorities, there is uh, funding available also on the FNR side for granting uh, PhD students, postdocs, but also for mobility schemes. Uh, we have heard from uh, Louis Gauthier from the Innovation Council that there are, that there are uh, uh, innovation clusters and industrial uh, sectors that, that have opportunities to collaborate. Uh, I was very much impressed also by uh, by the presentation of Mila done, done by Catherine Sen, right? Or how you can see that physically you have research and companies coming together because it's in that framework where then people are together that there are real projects starting. So um, thanks again, uh, everyone, for, for, for your time. Thank you, Andy, for presenting your, your project and, and Jacques as well. Um, I hope uh, this is uh, the first one for, for many others. And uh, for any questions, as Stephanie said, you have our contact details and you should not hesitate to reach out to us, every one of us. So thank you, one. Thank you everyone for participating and I hope to hear from you soon. And thanks to Lux Innovation for hosting this webinar today for all of us. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.